Hello, my name is Sammy Wakefield. I'm an occupational therapist and the inventor of Hammy. I want to share the history behind Hammy, how he came about, and the benefits of using him as a teaching tool. I also want to give you an example of how he can make complex concepts easy to understand. As an OT working in seating and mobility for many years, I often needed to explain complex body shape concepts to clients, caregivers, and other team members. About 20 years ago, I became frustrated trying to describe these three-dimensional concepts using two-dimensional language. This is especially difficult when people lack an anatomy background or a common language. Hammy was born of that frustration. Originally a wooden model, I created Hammy to demonstrate one of my favorite sayings, what happens at the lips and the fingertips begins at the hips. The first hammies were designed to show the effect of shortened hamstrings on sitting posture. Wooden hammy demonstrated this well, but there were issues like droopy heads and it was labor intensive to make. Hammy has evolved as a 3D printed simplified anatomical model. He has more features to assist in teaching about seating and positioning concepts. The lumbar spine and legs below the knee joint are connected by multi-joint muscle groups with the pelvis caught in the middle. The pelvis, its position and movements, ripple up the spine and have profound effects not only on lower body posture, but on how the shoulders sit on the rib cage, how the head sits on the neck, and what the eyes can see. There must be a good base of support for all these structures, beginning at the pelvis. Very often, problems with head, trunk, or lower body positioning can be traced to inadequate understanding of pelvic posture and its impact on the entire body. It's crucial to understand the dynamics of multi-joint muscles influencing the pelvis. Why hammy? You may wonder why we don't just use skeletons to demonstrate these concepts. Skeleton models are very useful in studying anatomy and muscle attachments and showing specific landmarks like the coccyx and the ischial tuberosities, which are the sit bones. But there are several reasons why Hammy works better for our purposes in teaching about body shape concepts. Skeleton models are complex with many joints and landmarks not necessarily relevant to our task, and they can be visually distracting. Hammy focuses on joints relevant to pelvic posture and how it affects the human body overall. Hammy has no rib cage and no arms. And that's intentional, because I don't want you to be distracted visually from the importance of what Hammy can demonstrate. Hammy does have a head and a line indicating the direction of his vision. Skeleton models are rigid and do not lend themselves well to observation of movement. And while it's theoretically possible to make very flexible skeleton models, they're not readily available. Hammy is more friendly and approachable, especially for lay people without medical background. Kids and parents love Hammy. Hammy provides a cost benefit compared to an anatomically correct model with pelvis, lumbar spine, and hips. For comparable cost, Hammy demonstrates concepts that cannot be shown in the rigid model, including head, neck, and lower extremity placement. Portability of skeleton models is a practical concern. Even a partial life-size model with pelvis, lumbar spine, and hips is bulky and heavy. Hammy is extremely portable and lightweight in comparison. Now, I will show you an example of Hammy as a teaching tool to make complex seating and positioning concepts easy to understand. When wheelchair users have a significant windswept posture of their lower body, decisions must be made about postural orientation in the wheelchair and the seating system. 
Hammy makes it easy to visualize the problem and discuss proposed solutions. To do this demonstration, I begin with Hammy's seat block horizontal in the lower position. Seat Hammy in a neutral pelvic posture with no rotation or sideways tilt and the cord locks released to the end. Note that Hammy's seat width would be the correct size for his pelvis in a wheelchair. Now move Hammy's legs into a windswept position, both moving to one side. Notice that Hammy's pelvis, head, and eyes are facing straight ahead while his legs and feet are pointed to one side. His overall width is now wider than his hip width measurement. In this situation, a decision must be made. Which part of the body is the priority for facing forward? The head, arms, and trunk, and pelvis, or the legs and feet? You can see that Hammy's trunk, spine, and head will need to twist if his legs and feet face straight forward. This decision will govern the wheelchair frame size and the seating system that is planned for the person. Using Hammy to demonstrate these kinds of practical issues can make communication and teamwork with clients and caregivers easier and more effective. Mm -hmm.